Everything about this school is just awesome. There's really no other place like it. The length of the nose is probably right. It provides opportunities for people of all ages to come together around the same passion. That passion is art. If this is what you want to do, this is where you got to be. The Lyme Academy College of Fine Arts in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Though less than 30 years old, this New England college has already become one of the most respected fine arts schools in the nation. But this looks much better. The reason for that can be summed up in three words. Elizabeth Gordon Chandler. No, it doesn't. I had exactly. hoped when I was 12 to do something which would make the world a little better than it was. I didn't realize what a big job that was going to be. Chandler started out as one of her generation's most gifted sculptors. And became one of its most important educators. It was a journey that began in her late 20s, when the young concert harpist fell under the spell of clay. It's something you just have to do. You couldn't possibly not do it. She went on to win competitions and commissions. Her bronze reliefs graced the nave of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. But in the 1970s, Chandler's style of realism fell out of favor. Modern art had turned the art world upside down, and American schools were dropping classical teaching techniques faster than you could say abstract. And I thought, if somebody doesn't start teaching soon, there'll be nobody left that knows how to teach it. So Chandler and her artist friends decided to teach it themselves. In 1976, they opened a representational art school in the basement of the local art association. Less than 10 years later, they moved into the historic cell house in the center of town. And over the next decade, Chandler and her sculptor husband, Lotsi de Garande, gathered a dedicated group of artists together and built the academy into a fully accredited college. It now grants a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree and a post-baccalaureate certificate and is housed in a state-of-the-art campus. The studios are architecturally designed, they're filled with light, they're, uh, they're well-maintained, and the studios are really excellent. Particularly if you have a view of the back, then that's a good place to invoke that. Painters and draftsmen that come from different schools look around in amazement to see what resources we have here. The resources are immense. Learn to, to have more of a childlike curiosity. One of its greatest resources is its faculty. And there is, you can see, there's a little bit of... All master teachers and distinguished artists in their own right. It'll look real if you don't outline it. It's good enough to cost, and we want to raise it up. These teachers actually practice and work, and they have great shows, and they help you, and they know what you're going through. They've been there themselves. The corner of the eye, right here. Most of them tend to know exactly how to teach you in terms of where you are versus anyone else. And so it's kind of individual attention. And, uh, I go around each student okay. and try to uh, assess what their basic problem is. So it's teaching by demonstration, really. And all the teachers deeply believe in the school's mission. The mission of the school is to imbue students with the, the traditional tools that artists have used throughout time in the Western tradition. And those are both the conceptual concerns as well as the technical skills. It takes a third curve forward to support that which is above it. There is a certain craft about art. And if you don't know the craft, whatever you create doesn't have much of a background, doesn't have much in it. You need to go on with a little more of the anatomy. If you teach the fundamentals of art, then you can go ahead and do any kind of art you want and do it better. It's not because we're sold on creating artists that either painted like Michelangelo or even convinced that all students who graduated from here should carry on a figurative tradition, but rather a belief that this kind of education is based on skills. Otherwise, you're really working from a deficiency. You're always kind of making creative decisions around what you can't do. 
rather than from what you really can do. That philosophy struck a chord with students hungering for a solid foundation in landscape and the human figure in the classical tradition. It's a very good first. <laughs> She's got a lot of promise. I think what you want to know more is about you. And I came from Colorado and I've looked at a ton of schools and they were all very abstract based and just not something I was looking for. And then I, I saw this place and I came and I visited it and it was just great. Small community, very homey, family-like. You can learn anatomy, you can learn how the figure works, and then you can add your artistic interpretation to that foundation. Yeah, yeah. And this is still a little stiff. It's I not just the technique of drawing. You need to really go in deeply. You need to figure it all out. Feel how it goes. See? We have very serious students, and we want only very serious students. Regardless of age, the college attracts students from 18 to 80. I have a chance to change careers and I actually am doing something I want to do. And so this is kind of a dream that I never thought I'd be able to do this. The age range has been such a benefit because you have so many life skills to draw from. You know, when the 18-year-old is struggling with something, there's somebody to say, hey, this is how you do it. And you get to move past things so much faster. Besides drawing, painting, sculpture and printmaking studio classes, the Academy also offers a gallery space for both professionals and students to exhibit their work. But mostly, I think Plus, a comprehensive well. liberal arts program. <laughs> A hand alone does not make an artist. It takes a mind and it takes a heart and a spirit. And that includes the ingredient of the humanities that is such a critical piece of, of developing a, an integrated human being. It's a great deal better today than it was last week. But with all its strengths, one of the school's greatest assets remains the example set by its founder. Now in her 90s, Chandler still spends yeah, hours a day in her studio making art and hours at the Lyme Academy teaching it. For our students to see an individual who has pursued throughout her entire life a, uh, a passion for making art and found a way to make a career of it, to make a, a life from it, I think is extremely empowering to students. You know, it, it makes you feel like you could do anything. Her presence spiritually infects in every part of the operation. Above the cloud, where the cloud goes. I love to see a young student really begin to feel things and, and to be able to express what they feel. It's wonderful to watch these students grow. And the school continues to grow as well. Located on 47 acres, new buildings are in the works, and the master program is on the horizon. But no matter how much the school expands, this college will always stay true to one woman's dream. It satisfies my 12-year-old wish, which was to make the world a little better than it was. Good art is very, very good for the human soul.